Hey, Missouri Nation, Jason here. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you the ultimate check ride strategy. What is happening, Missouri Nation? Jason Shepard here. Welcome into Mock Check Ride May, sharing with you the things we only teach our online ground school members. You're like family, you're getting a indoctrination to what the m online ground school is really like through this series, through these videos. Hey, be sure to throw us a thumbs up, a subscribe on YouTube, a like on Facebook. Make sure you follow us there as well. Uh, follow us on Instagram as we continue to share so many great things, including actual mock check rides, all through mock check ride may this is the ultimate check ride strategy i don't want to waste any time I want to honor your time tip number one is this it is to immerse yourself immerse yourself in all things aviation what we find our most successful online ground school members do is well, they're always learning. They're utilizing books like our Pastor Private Pilot Check Ride, Pastor Instrument Pilot Check Ride, Pastor Commercial Pilot Check Ride. All these available as an audiobook. And they're walking the dog, listening to the audiobook. They're at the gym, they're driving their car, they're at work listening to the audiobook. And how it works is it's a three hour long mock check ride, basically. And how I got these questions is I sat in on hundreds of check rides, wrote down every question they ask, and then provide the correct answer. Now, as an audiobook, how I deliver it though is I read the question, pause for a second, let you think about it in your head, and then tell you the correct answer with that. Immerse yourself in this. You've got to commit the study time to it. You've got to be flying, jeez, two times a week at a minimum leading up to your check ride, studying. I would say five days a week is preferable. You can take the weekends off. Spaced repetition is good from flying and from study time as well. The next tip, find your weak areas utilizing the aviation mastery method. Inside of the online ground school, and if you're not a ground school member, you can go to m0atrial.com if you just wanna check this out, just to give yourself a little boost going into the check ride even, and think about us when it comes time for instrument or whatever that may be. And by the way, these tips transcend the check ride. Private, ATP, it doesn't matter. These tips today transcend any check ride. You need to find your weak areas. We do something called the aviation mastery method that you have to get questions right four times in order for them to fit in the mastery category. If you get a question wrong, it comes back to the beginning of it. So you're always seeing the areas and the subjects that you need to improve on. Show me just questions I missed last quiz. Show me just questions I've only gotten right once. Show me questions I've never seen before. Those are the kinds of things you need to work on. Now, it's easy just to focus on the weak areas, but don't let your strong areas dwindle as well. Be sure you're focusing on that. Now, for the flying portion, you have to get what I call a second opinion flight. It's a mock check ride is what it really is. Get a second opinion flight. Think about it this way. So many of you have been flying and you're lucky for this, you're blessed for this, you've been flying with one instructor. You've heard one voice, you've heard things taught one way, you flied with, you've flown with that person who weighs their amount, right? You've never flown with anybody different. Sometimes it's a little bit I get a little bit nervous flying with somebody different who just speaks differently, weighs a different amount. The airplane will perform differently, as silly as that sounds, but they ask questions differently and they might have a different perspective on things. Get a second opinion flight from another CFI at your flight school. If you have one, if not, maybe your CFI can recommend a buddy. Do it in your airplane. Do it, just simulate it like it's a check ride. I don't want you to be nervous and the DPE be the first time someone different has sat in that plane with you. You're already gonna be nervous don't get nervous with just somebody asking questions differently than you're actually used to. Now, leading up to this, here's your next tip. Plan your flight from printed weather. What on earth do I mean by that? Every single check ride has a cross country component to it. The mistake I used to make back in the day is I'd have an 8 a.m. check ride. I'd wake up at 4 a.m. I would look at the TAFs. I'd look at the weather, look at all the forecasts, and I would plan my cross country, and I would show up so tired to my check ride because I woke up at 4 a.m. when I should be, you know, pumped and ready and energized for this check ride. You know the truth? All the check ride examiner wants to see is that you know how to plan a cross country. So you know what I started doing and what all my learners do and all the learners at Rex Air in Naples do? What everybody does is night before, day before, somewhere around there, 
They'll, print, they'll plan their flight plan and they'll print out the weather they used. So when it comes time on the oral exam, they say, show me your flight plan. You say, hey, listen, this is my flight plan. I used the weather from yesterday so I could get a good night's rest and everything else. I printed out the weather so you can cross check it. Here's the METAR I used. Here's the TAF I used. Guess what? Here's a cool thing too. Since you printed out that METAR, since you printed out that TAF, what METAR and TAF do you think you're going to be quizzed on on your check ride? The one you used for flight planning. The one you already had a chance to study and look through. Print out the weather you use for your flight plan. Don't be fumbling around going, oh, I planned that hours later and now the weather has changed. You know, that's fine. And I realize when you go to find your first checkpoint, the time may not work out perfectly. That's not what they're looking for. They're looking to see, do you know how to plan? Do you know the science and the math behind it? And as most will tell you who've done check rides before, you don't even make it to your first cross country checkpoint. They divert you usually even before that. Here's the next tip. The day before, please don't even think about flying. When an airplane flies over, I forbid you to even look up at the airplane. Don't even think about flying. Don't watch an M0A video. Don't log into the online ground school. Don't listen to the audiobook. Don't do any of that. I want you just to rest, to be with your family, to recharge. I'm talking healthy lunch, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no drinking, nothing like that, minimal caffeine, you'll be nervous enough, go to bed early, do whatever you need to do to fall asleep, whatever you need, right? You need to get some rest. Wake up, healthy breakfast, the minimum amount of caffeine that you need to actually start your day. If you need any, you'll be nervous and jittery enough. Don't even think about flying the day before. People don't talk about, you know, pre-flight, pre-check ride nutrition and sleep and everything else, but it is so crucial to flying your best. Now on that day off, I need you to show up early. We are in aviation and we are professional. We show up early, right? 15 minutes early is really late is how I look at it for a check ride. When I'd have an 8 a.m. check ride, I was there at 7 a.m. I wanted to see the room I was sitting in. I wanted to know where the bathroom was. I wanted to lay out all my books. And by the way, I brought all my books. Uh, some of you came up to us at air shows recently where I talk about I had a milk crate, literally one of those big old milk crates full of all my books. And I'd put them down, I'd spread them all out. And one examiner asked me, he goes, do you know everything in these books? I said, no, sir, I don't know everything in the books, but I know where to find it. I think he liked that answer. Have them tabbed. You can bring things like past your private pilot check ride with you. You can bring your MSRA books with you. Whatever. Bring every book that has something to do with aviation, bring it with you because you may need it. Show up early, bring all your books, and here's a kicker. Dress professionally. I know this may just be a hobby for you. For some of you, it's, it's a career, whatever that may be. This is how I suggest to dress because we do check rides in Florida in August, and I don't always wear button downs like this. Dress like you're going to play golf at a decent golf course, right? Even your municipal course, whatever that is. A, a polo and some shorts, like golf shorts, whatever that may be. Dress like you're going to golf, and I don't even golf, but you know how a golfer dresses. Dress like you're going to golf at a decent golf course with that. Tuck in your shirt, whatever makes you comfortable, but you need to dress professionally. No flip flops, no cut off jean shorts, whatever it is, dress professionally because what we're doing is professional in everything that we do. So these are some of the tips I share inside the online ground school. If you want to check that out, go to m0atrial.com. Take a free two-week, no strings attached trial of our online ground school. See why the best just keeps getting better. Speaking of the best, we've got some tips from some ground school members and some amazing fans of the M0A nation. I did a call out asking for video tips on some of their best tips. So here's some online ground school members and some fans sharing their best check ride tips. Hi, my name is Mark Facer. I'd like to give you my three check ride tips. Number one, take the check ride as an opportunity to learn from a really, really good pilot. You're flying with somebody with thousands of hours of experience uh, teaching. You can't help but learn from an experience like that. Once the check ride is done and you're in your oral debrief, make notes, write the stuff down, and learn it afterwards. That will really put you in good stead. It will help you Take the information, apply it, and use it for future uh, flying and keep, make you a safer pilot. Number two, talk through what you're doing. As you're flying the airplane, talk through the maneuvers as you make power changes or as you clear, make clearing turns, all those kind of things. It lets the DPE know that you understand the procedures and that you have a, you know, a good idea of what's going on in the airplane. So talk through the procedures. 
it will it will really help. It helps you learn and it helps them understand. Last number number three is when you make an error and you will it's a check ride, fix it. The the DPE does not require that that you never exceed a standard. The requirements are that we don't consistently exceed the standard. So if we are assigned an altitude an altitude of two thousand feet and we go through to 2,200, we'll fix it and say correcting. Let the DPE know that you, re you recognize the error, you fixed it, and, uh, that, and you're moving on. So those are my three check right tips. Take the opportunity to learn, talk through the maneuvers, and fix the errors. Hey guys, Jonathan Johnson here. A couple of check right tips from my personal experience. Number one, over prepare for the oral portion of your check ride. I used Pasture Private and past your instrument audio check ride books. I listen to them cover to cover literally dozens and dozens of times leading up to my check rides. And not only did it allow me to breeze through the oral portion of the check ride, but it gave me an extra confidence boost going into the flight portion and let my DPE know that I was prepared to be there that day. My second tip on the flight portion of the exam, focus on the procedure that you're doing at that time. I almost busted my private because I did my standards a sloppy soft fill takeoff and I was still thinking about that while doing unusual attitudes later on. Focus on the procedure that you're doing. You'll do great. You'll pass your check ride. See ya. My name is Dre Barnett and I have two check ride tips for you. For your oral, you just want to make sure that you're calm and confident in everything that you're answering. And for your flight, you just want to take your time. Do your pre-maneuver checklist, go through the flow. You've already paid for the flight, just take your time and execute those maneuvers. Hey everyone, this is Holly. I just wanted to give you my number one check ride tip that I use for my commercial check ride. So you create your flight plan for your check ride. Put all your information up there, whole lot of information. The more information you have on it, the better. And you've got your estimated wins for the check ride right? Because that's what you use for flight planning. It's all estimated. So for your diversion, you need to know your ground speed so that you can do your fuel calculations if you have enough fuel to get to your destination or your diversion destination. So I use Jason's wind card that he talks about in his webinars. I have a link that I can send you for that. It's pretty sweet. You just put in your winds, your estimated winds, and it gives you a ground speed for each section of the wind card. So then I took that wind card and I shrunk it tiny and I stuck it on my sectional right there, little bitty card with all my winds. Next step is take a little sticky note, a little flag, put a flag at each of your checkpoints on your sectional and on the flag, Write the estimated winds and the ground speed, oh, sorry, the ground speed that you've calculated. That way, if you're on your check ride at any point when you divert, you've got a pretty good idea of what the ground speed's going to be for the estimated winds. Having this information handy is going to really help you for making that quick calculation that you need to determine, do I have enough fuel to get to my diversion destination? Anyway, that's my number one check, check ride tip. I hope you like it, and thanks so much for being a family. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the nation. Okay, bye. So what do you think? We got a pretty cool community, a family, that we call the m 0 Nation. I am blessed to play a small part in your big success. I can't wait for your emails, your posts on Facebook, your tags on Instagrams, you know, of you holding up that temporary airman certificate. That's what I really want to see. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. Never hesitate to reach out whether you are a ground school member or not. We have a phenomenal support team that is here to serve you if you have any questions at all. Have a wonderful rest of your day and most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.